Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Grace Baptist. My name is Amy, and I'm going to get us started today. It's so nice to see everyone here after such a great church service last week with our Hallelujah Loop de Doo, right? <laughs> Amen to that. That was a great time of fellowship and music. Um, we just had a great time together um, worshiping and praising our Lord. Uh, this morning, as you came in, there's a table up here. There's some information on that table. There's connection cards. We'd like to get to know you a little bit better and for you to get to know us a little bit better. Um, there's also some handouts that Donna Rathermill is going to explain in a minute and a missions brochure. So make sure you come on up and, and get that as we're getting the service started today. Um, a couple announcements. Our first one on Sunday um, is Halloween. So we are doing our annual trunk or treat. I see some kids here giving a high five over there. <laughs> our fist right kids? Um, so we have put out invitations to a lot of people in our community, especially at the Mum Festival a couple weekends ago. So we are expecting a lot of people to come out for our trunk or treat this year. So that means we need more candy. Uh, I saw the box was getting full today, but come on and bring your candy in. Um, and if you can join us next Sunday evening, uh, that would be great. Come on down, um, bring your car, set up a table with some games. Um, along with the candy, we have some people making pulled pork and mac and cheese. And I know a lot of you enjoyed that food last year, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I am going to now invite up Donna Rathermill, the chair of our church board. Good morning. Good morning. It's that time of year again when we activate our nominating committee to choose chairs for the 2022 board and the leadership of our church. That's what the handouts over there, who the current people on the board are and a list of the uh, nominating committee. I'm going to have them all stand or wave so that you know who they are since they'll be looking for you. We have Michelle Mensel, John Martell. Bill Larson, back there on the drums, and Keith Nielsen, who is up in the balcony. These people will be working on finding <laughs> chairs and filling the spaces on our uh, board for the next year. So if they approach you, don't run and hide. Seriously listen and consider, because if they're asking you, they might see something in you that you don't see. A lot of us were very scared the first time we were asked. So it's a way to step out in faith. So let's pray for them that the, God will send them the right leaders to put into the positions we need. Thank you, Donna. Um, our women's Bible study got started up last week. There were about eight or nine women there. It was a great time of uh, Bible study and fellowship. Uh, this year, this time where we're working through the book of Psalms, and we're looking at four different types of Psalms. Um, Psalms of thanks, and Psalms of lament, which we'll talk about this Tuesday. Um, Psalms, of Psalms of praise, and also uh, the, what we call the royal Psalms. So ladies, it's Tuesday evenings at 6.30 here at the church down in the fellowship hall. Come on out and join us. Um, Operation Christmas Child is here. As you can see behind me, we've started to collect some boxes. We want to get over 100 boxes to send to children all over the world for Christmas. Uh, so please fill up those boxes. The boxes are downstairs. Grab one on your way out near the back door. And please have them back into the church by November 14th. One more announcement that I think you'll be excited to hear for those of you that are here. Um, coffee Hour is starting up again this fall. We will be starting on November 7th, and we're going to have a sign-up for volunteers to help out with coffee hour. After we finish the announcements, we'll start the sign-up going through the pews today. Let's pray. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we're so thankful this morning to be in your house. Um, we're thankful for the beauty of the creation around us, the beautiful leaves, the fall weather. Um, and we just thank you um, for your glory and for your creation. We thank you for our time of fellowship today, for our time of worship, our time of learning more about you. We pray that this will be a blessing to you and be honoring to you. In your name we pray. Amen. If we can all stand together as we have a time of worship.
your name is, that it's so powerful, Lord. Lord, it says in the scriptures that even the demons know the name of the Lord and they, they're fearful, Lord. So we just thank you for who you are. We thank you especially for Jesus, for sending your son to die for us, Lord, as we sing this one last song. this morning with hearts that are turned toward you. Lord, I just ask that our worship have been pleasing to you. Let it be a soothing aroma to you, Almighty God. Lord, this morning I would just ask for a full outpouring of your Holy Spirit upon each and every life here, upon this church, upon our community, upon our state, and upon our country. Lord, the church is your people. Lord, I would just ask that you minister to each and every one of us, wherever we are right now, Lord, to bring our hearts fuller in to your mighty presence. We love you, Lord, and we praise you. And Jesus, in your name we pray. Amen. We are live, so thank you on uh, those watching um, service. I want to say, Amy, thank you. I mean, that was, I've just been thrilled. Yeah, give her a huge hand. And the support she has through the missions, the missions committee, um, putting this together, um, meetings and working on logistically, tracking things down and, and doing all this. I really think that you know, our missions has taken such a, our missions focus has taken such a huge step this year as you, as Donna had talked about, coming on the, coming a board member and chairing the missions. Um, we've just had some great exposure to our 
people that are serving in different areas and with the what you've worked on with the flyer that can go out so it can really allow us to pray and know. And I'll tell you, as Amy said, if you have a heart and you want to know more, you can come see her and and speak with her and learn more about how how also you can support those serving. But Amy, thank you very much. And to the entire missions committee. And I know you were here, you, you guys were here late. I came walking back in the church at 6.30 or quarter to 7 on Friday night, and everybody was still here working on things. So thank you very much. And again, let's give her another big hand. I think it really leads in today to the message that we're looking at in John, in John 4, 43 through 54. We'll read it in a moment. A faith that is authentic. Do we have an authentic faith that represents what Jesus has called us to do? And is that faith growing? Because a true authentic faith, as we're going to see this morning, grows. And it continues to be a power and a source to others, even as we go out into the world and we serve where the Lord has called us to. And also in that authentic faith, it allows us to grow more and more in the areas that we need help, in the areas that we need to have ministry for ourselves. So what I'd like to do is if you have your Bibles, you can turn to John 4. We're going to start it in verse 43 through 54. It's on the screen if you don't have your Bible or you just want to listen. After the two days, he went forth from there into Galilee. For Jesus himself testified that a prophet has no honor in his own country. So when he came to Galilee, the Galileans received him, having seen all the things that he did in Jerusalem at the feast. For they themselves also went to the feast. Therefore, he came again to Cana of Galilee, where he had made the water wine. And there was a royal official whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and was imploring him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. So Jesus said to him, Unless you people see signs and wonders, you simply will not believe. The royal official said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, Go, your son lives. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and started off. As he was now going down, his slaves met him, saying that his son was living. So he inquired of them the hour when he began to get better. Then they said to him, Yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at that hour in which Jesus said to him, Your son lives. And he himself believed, and his whole household. This is again a second sign that Jesus performed when he had come out of Judea into Galilee. That is God's word for us, God's people. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, let us see as we, as we hear and read this and look at this scripture today. Lord, let us see that you, you do have a call to us for an authentic faith. Lord, let us be challenged this morning to grow our faith in so many areas. But Lord, that that faith is only going to be placed and found in you and through you. So Lord, I would just ask that you touch each of our hearts this morning, exactly where we are at, and minister to us, just as you always have. We love you, we praise you, and we say, come Holy Spirit. And we pray all of this, Jesus, in your holy, mighty, and perfect name. Amen. Amen. A lot happens there. We like that story. We like to be healed. We like to see healing. We see the power of Jesus as John is setting out. Now he, He's showing us that Jesus is the Christ, the deity of Christ, the power that is there. A faith that is authentic will grab on to that power. 
But we need to start out with our bringing our main focus today. The will of he who saved us must determine all of our actions as our faith grows. The will of he who saved us must determine all of our actions as our faith grows. See, faith is just not one static, simple point in time. Faith is not just about one thing that happens. One thing that happened. It's not about just the signs and the wonders. Because really, as we look at our text this morning, as exciting as it is, it's broken clearly into two, into two different things. We have John 4, that, that beginning, 43 through 45. And we see Jesus walking in. We see him heading in. He went forth from there into Galilee. And people were following him. We said, well, of course they were following him. He's Jesus. No, of course they were following him because they wanted something. They wanted stuff. They wanted food. They wanted more. They want to see more water turned into wine. We want to see more. Show us more. Give us more. It was a faith based on the results that the people wanted. And sometimes that's where we can start. And that will sometimes cause us to maybe shape Jesus. Oh, Jesus, yeah, you know, yeah, that sign, those things that you're doing. And I'm going to kind of mold you into what I want. You know, sometimes that even pulls us a little bit away from God's word. Because we'll avoid those certain sections of God's word where Jesus is saying, you're not molding me. I'm molding you. And sometimes we pull away from those sections. I'll go over that one. So we want to see that. We want to see that's a development of faith. Jesus was accepted because of his works. But our faith cannot simply rest on the works of Jesus. But it is a good beginning. And that's why John is presenting this to us. This is here for us to see. Jesus does wonderful, miraculous things. Gives us so much so that we can see. We say, Lord, I, I want to see more. The grace of Jesus is a starting point for us. It was a starting point here as we look at God's word. He came to us where we were. Remember that day? Do you remember that day when Jesus showed up in your life? He came to you where you were. But our hope was truly found when we believed on him. So we see that part. And how about the second part? The 46 through 54, which we're going to dig into. A faith that's developed. A faith. Our faith needs to be based on the character, the truth, and the knowledge of Jesus. We can learn that authentic faith believes. We can grow in that authentic faith. You know what? We might have been down on our knees that one morning, that one night, that one afternoon that Jesus showed up. Now we want to continue to grow that. But we learn something quickly that only one thing can save. Who came to Jesus there and implored him? You think about that picture, imploring Please, Jesus, please, Jesus. A nobleman. A nobleman who had riches. He had power. He had soldiers. He had access to pretty much any religion he probably wanted. The nobleman had everything. Everything was available to him. There's only one place for him to go. And that was to Jesus. And we're going to look in a minute how we react exactly that same way at times. The noble man came to Jesus in a great moment of affliction. <clears throat> Nowhere does it say here that that's bad. That's how we went to Jesus. It doesn't matter because we went to Jesus. That's the key. Even as we see in, 
and we look in, in Hebrews 12, 11, because sometimes you say, well, it was, that moment was affliction. I, I was really in a bad place, and I went to Jesus. And now here I am today. All discipline for the moment seems not to be joyful but sorrowful. Yet to those who have been trained by it, afterwards it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness. Hebrews 12, 11. Sometimes we go to Jesus. He will discipline us. We bring him our affliction. We walk into Jesus in the, in the midst of our sin, or maybe the consequences of our sin. But he's there. He says, I'll minister to you. I'll heal. I will take care of. And it allows us to grow. So today as we're about to explore authentic faith, we want to see this as growth, as challenge. Because we're going to use an analogy of fire. It's how it grows. Because we do see that in God's Word. So let's just give an example of the kind of faith that we saw here. If in 2012, Let's just say we're back. Remember, can anybody remember back to 2012? No. <laughs> and say you had $100. And you took that $100, right about the middle of 2012 or so, and you invested it in something. There's something that you could have invested in in 2012 with $100, and you would have $5,000 right now. 500% return. That is pretty impressive. So imagine if you're somebody who was really rich and said, well, I had $1,000. And I invested it. And we do the math and we come up with a much bigger number. Well, you know what that investment was? If you had that $100 in 2012, it would have been in? Facebook. Facebook, that's when they went public. Wow. Look what Facebook did for me. The financial activity, the financial action, the progress that Facebook has done. I love that. What a wondrous, miraculous thing. I love the power of Facebook. And we put our faith in Facebook right there. Do we trust Facebook? No. Nope. Okay, we just, we probably, um, did the live feed go down at this point now? No. <laughs> just got, just a second. <laughs> but you think about that. We like Facebook because of what we got out of it. I got a 500% investment. If you're an investment person, has anybody done that well? And if you have, you know, great, but... We don't trust Facebook for a minute. But we like what they did for us. <laughs> How do we look at Jesus? I like Jesus, what you've done for me. In so many things, you've gotten me out of a lot of jams. I have, in a way, fire insurance. I'm not going to hell. Do we really trust Jesus? Sometimes. We say sometimes. When push comes to shove, where is our faith at that moment? This is what we're looking at this morning with the nobleman. He came initially for something very important and implored Jesus. And the, and the saving and the life of his child, critical. So important. But don't ever miss that he and his whole family believed on him. And we're saved. That's how authentic faith grows. And we're going to look at that. We love that. We, we like thinking on Facebook at times. But it's such a part of our life, even as we heard a little bit before, how social media can be used to reach people. Only one thing is everlasting. 
Think about everywhere else we're putting our faith in. I'm going to read to you 2 Peter 3.10. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, in which the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat, and the earth and its works will be burned up. Everything in this world that we place our faith in, gone. But Jesus is everlasting. And that's where we want to start to look at an authentic faith. A spark of fire, a flame, an inferno. That's how our faith grows. You know, even as we look in John at, in verse 49 of chapter 4, we see, the royal official said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. There's a spark of faith. We see the spark of faith right there. The spark of faith comes from the word of others at times. It clearly depends on whether we are speaking or where we are listening. It depends on us sometimes. And we have to have that spark. We have to share that spark. And then as we hear, when we heard it, we heard the word, there's a spark of faith. The proclamation, the proclaiming of Christ is so important. John Wesley said, the more exactly the words of God are considered, the more faith is increased. The word of God. That's the spark that ignites. The words of God are considered or reflected upon. As we reflect on the authentic God of the universe, we will develop a greater authenticity in our faith. As we reflect on the word, as we hear the word, as we invest in time in the word, as we, as we attend discipleship opportunities at church, as we, that ourselves, as some of the guys we do, will say, what scripture did you read today? How to speak to you. Challenging each other. You know, a spark can be a bit small. In reference to the nobleman, he didn't have a whole lot of faith. He just knew Jesus as a healer. And that spark didn't quite grow yet because he said, well, I have... Yeah, Jesus can heal. That's great. And he also, look, he even lessened in the spark. He had faith. He knew, okay, that's the start. That's where I'm going to go. But he also made the assumption that Jesus' presence had to be with his son for the healing. So the spark is the start. The authentic faith, we start to grow. We start to see. We start to understand the attributes of Jesus. Omniscience. Omnipresence. Omnipotent. All-powerful, everywhere, all-knowing. But we start with that spark. <clears throat> the spark has some efficiency, some sufficiency. That spark will bring us to Jesus, just like the nobleman. That's where we want to go. And oftentimes the spark is just, ooh, spark, spiritual curiosity. Spiritual curiosity is not authentic faith, but it's a spark. <laughs> because as we know, when we hear God's word, God's word never returns to him empty. And that's a promise that he has. So then there's the spark. Then there's the fire of faith. And as we see, the fire of faith, something is starting to develop here. As we see, even in that moment, in verse 49, the royal official came and said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. It was developing. The faith in Jesus was developing. He was in front of the Savior. Yet he was grasping desperately. But grasping desperately at Jesus. In 31. But seeing the wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his Authentic faith is not desperate. But as the fire, as the spark grows into a fire, authentic faith can move from desperation as we seek more of Jesus, as we call on more of Jesus, as we learn more about Jesus, as we pursue more of him. 
Authentic faith moves from desperation to confident expectation. That is hope. Authentic faith starts to develop. Remember, about three weeks ago, we were talking about are we hand ringers or Christ proclaimers? We're bringing hand ringers back. We don't want to be, oh, desperation, desperation. When push comes to shove, we say, Lord, all hell is breaking loose around me. I have confidence in you. That's authentic faith as it grows. Because we have the fire of faith that moved from the spark of faith. And in verse 50, the flames of faith. We think about this, the flames of faith. Our actions, when we're dealing with the flames of faith, our actions are based on what Jesus calls us to do. We might even say content is added to our faith. Because we start to fully see. We look at verse 50 and we see this with the nobleman. Jesus said to him, go, your son lives. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and started off. There was now content. We got before Jesus. The noble man came before Jesus and said, implore, Jesus, I need. And then he began to see the truth. Jesus, I need to know who you are. Do you know we've been developing this in John the whole time as we go through? Remember John 1.1? 1, 1? Jesus is the word. In John 1, 29, Behold, the Lamb of God. In 1, 34, This is the Son of God. In 1, 38, Referred to as Rabbi, Teacher. 1, 41, Jesus is the Messiah. 1, 49, He's the King of Israel. Content is being developed. In John 1, 51, The Son of Man. And remember what the Samaritan woman said? The Savior of the world. As our faith grows, the spark, the fire, the flame, as the flames grow, as more content of who Jesus is is piled in and we discover more and more, we see who he is. Our faith has to move away at that point from emotional feelings. Because emotional feelings are not authentic faith. Informed belief leads into authentic faith. Informed belief about who Jesus is. He is the Christ. Where else can I go? The nobleman is showing us from a spark. He stepped before Jesus. I heard about you, Jesus. Then the fire. There's more. I'm going to implore you, Jesus. Because I see based on who Jesus is and the faith we have in him. And then we come to the point, the all-consuming inferno of faith. We look in verses 51 through 54. As he was now going down, his slaves met him, saying that his son was living. So he inquired of them the hour when he began to get better. Then they said to him, Yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at that hour in which Jesus said to him, Your son lives. And he himself believed in his whole household. This is again a second sign that Jesus performed when he had come out of Judea into Galilee. The all-consuming inferno of faith that takes over everything. Absolute trust with our lives to him based on his call. I don't believe that any of us are sitting in this church or standing in this church this morning because it's a coincidence. There is a call on our lives and it's to grow in an authentic faith. And it's to grow, see, and know Jesus more. In allowing that fire that started with a spark 
that grew into a flame, that grew into an inferno that takes everything that is not of God in our lives. How about Hebrews 12, 28 and 29? You've heard this scripture before. Therefore, since we receive a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us show gratitude by which we may offer to God an acceptable service with reverence and awe. For our God is a consuming fire. This morning, the consuming fire, the inferno of who Jesus is, that grows our authentic faith. That has allowed him to place a call on us. One decision in obedience to Christ does not make our faith authentic. You need to hear that this morning. One decision in obedience to Christ does not make our faith authentic. Mm -hmm. It continues to grow. A continuation and a stepping to where he calls us is authentic faith. And this morning, we have to allow our faith from the spark to the fire to the flame to the inferno. There are some things in life right now some things that each of us have and are dealing with that we need to allow the inferno of the faith, mm -hmm. the power, might, and majesty of Christ to burn up and destroy. Because our faith can't move forward. A continuation of stepping to where he calls us is authentic faith. You know, in 1 Corinthians 1, verses 21 and 23. For since in the wisdom of God, the world through the wisdom did not come to know God, God was well pleased through the foolishness of the message preached. We see the message that has been preached to us. <clears throat> is that we are in Christ. The message, we have, there's no condemnation in Christ. You can sit here this morning and say, oh, I have a whole lot of things. I'm not going to let Jesus touch those. I'm not going to let my faith grow enough because I really like those things. You know what? That's where you're at this morning. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to tell you that's okay where you're there. But I want you to start to place trust in all that Jesus has given us. We need to start opening our eyes to allowing our faith to grow. Because you can be there. You know what? You're still going to go to heaven if you believe in Jesus. But you're missing out on all that can be involved in your walk of faith. Paul wrote to the church at Colossae. They were going through a hard time. They had struggles. Individuals were acting in ways they shouldn't, but you know what? He knew that they loved the Lord. The church had some, we're just, we're just struggling right now. Paul says, your faith. And although you were formerly alienated and hostile in mind, engaged in evil deeds, Yet he has now reconciled you in his fleshly body through death in order to present you before him holy and blameless and beyond reproach. You see, that's where we are now. You say, you know what? I'm just here because there's a spark. Well, you know, 10 years ago there used to be a flame. You know, maybe maybe uh, last year there was an inferno for a while, but it, it's dwindled. Paul says, if indeed you continue in the faith firmly established and steadfast and not moved away from the hope of the gospel that you have heard, which has proclaimed in all creation under heaven. See, Jesus started out talking to the nobleman. Because that nobleman just walked up to him with a little spark. said, I need you, Jesus. He implored Jesus, imploring his bag. 
said, you have to come, Jesus. This morning, I think some of us are saying, Jesus, you have to come and step in right now. Because things are rough. Things are hard. I got the spark. But I need more. You know, maybe when you thought I started off and said we need an authentic faith. I was going to stand up here telling you what you need to do. What has to happen. What better happen. No, you see, Jesus just loves us. He's an all-consuming fire that is willing right now to step in and say, if there's anything that's going on in your life, I'll take care of it. Be it sin, be it conflict, be it angst, be it worry, be it anxiety. What are those things that you need to bring before Jesus this morning? You know, from the very beginning, we saw Deuteronomy 9.3. Know therefore today that it is the Lord your God who is crossing over before you as a consuming fire. He will destroy them and he will subdue them before you so that you may drive them out and destroy them quickly, just as this Lord has spoken to you. See, God was talking about the enemies that the nation of Israel was facing. The nation of Israel, when I look at it, has a striking resemblance to the church. The church is us, you and I. What are those things before us this morning? What are those enemies before us that we need to say, Lord, I've been, no, Lord, I've been leading the way. And let him lead the way. You know, what are those things that you need to say, Lord, it's this. Lord, it's an addiction. Lord, it's, a, it's my marriage. Lord, it's my health. Lord, it's my job. Lord, it's my family. To let him minister and destroy the strongholds in our life that are keeping us from enjoying the all-consuming fire of who Jesus is. We need to allow this morning the fire of God to enter into our lives like maybe it never has before. To just pour down on us and destroy those things. Because, you know, authentic faith tells us, I believe, four things. When we have authentic faith, and I'm going to tell you, you're, all of us are in, you and I are in one of these four places. Authentic faith will tell us, tells us that fair, failure will not make us lag behind and lose focus on God's will. You may have failed at something. You, know, you may be failing at something right now. But let that authentic faith come in. We will not lose focus. We will not lag behind. We will follow ahead. We follow Jesus. Authentic faith tells us that success will not make us run before God. When we have authentic faith, we don't say, God, great, thanks. And off we go, stepping into something that we shouldn't. Authentic faith will never allow us to fall behind when we fail. But authentic faith will never allow us to leap ahead with success. Authentic faith tells us that failure will not make us worry. Failure will not allow us to become eager to move on from the mission field in which we are planted. If you failed in a spot you're in, don't say, Lord, I'm giving up and moving on. The authentic faith, Jesus says, I'll pick you up and we'll fix this. 
authentic faith tells us that success will not cause us to remain stationary, though. And that's a scary one. <clears throat> we saw five different groups this morning, five people serving in different places. Authentic faith. Because when the authentic faith hit the nobleman, what did he say? What did he respond to? What did Jesus say? He said, go. Acts 1.8, go. The Great Commission, go. Great Commission doesn't mean maybe you're going overseas. Jesus is saying, go. Take that authentic faith and watch what I'll do with you. Watch what I'll take you through. Watch what I'll move you into. I would challenge you this morning, if you're saying, I got a little spark. I'm here. I'm here at church. I got a spark. Praise God. Say, no, man, I've been, I've been, the spark has grown into a, a, a pretty good sized fire, but I'm not ready to, to give for all those things in there and let Jesus have that. Take a couple things. Write down what they are and pray on that this week. Say, I'm going to give those couple things. Say, well, I've seen the flames lashing out. I got some things that the flames really need to hit. Let the fire of faith at them. And then expect that inferno of faith to take you to a place that you never imagined. Where you will see the glory of God. Father, we thank you and we love you. Lord, take the spark that is in, that is in each of us. Lord, Take the fire, take the flame, and grow it into the inferno. Lord, let us have an authentic faith. Lord, because when that authentic faith is alive and growing, we see how much we are loved by you at every moment that we step. So, Lord, minister to us here this morning, right where we are, whether it be a spark, a fire, a flame, or the inferno. Give us authentic faith. We love you, Jesus, and we praise you. And it's in your name that we pray. We can stand for our last song together.
faith, Lord. Lord, and we thank you. We have you as the center of our faith. You have given us life. You have given us hope. Lord, whether it be a spark, a fire, a flame, or an inferno, let that faith grow in us. I'll close this in Romans 15, 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. We love you, Lord, and praise you. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of your Sunday.